good to see uh, most of you are here. Okay, uh, let's get started. I think my microphone seems to be working. I think you should be able to hear me. Okay, I suppose. Uh, can you can one of you uh, just uh, let's say make some noise? Uh, correct in in, in down, uh, make some noise so that at least I know that uh, my uh, speakers and uh, headsets are working. Just to complete the feedback loop. Anyone? Just make some sound, I suppose. Yan Chang, since you're one so early, come in. Can you just make some noise uh, if you want to want us to listen to your voice? <laughs> anyone? Yeah, I know you can hear Morning. me, but I, so far I still cannot hear any of you. Probably my headset not working, is it? Hello, you can try. Make some noise. No. Let me check. Uh. Uh, let me know if any of you are making noise. Make some sound. Yes. Yes. Testing. No. Uh, cannot. So I, I have to leave and come back. Uh. So uh, because it looks like I, I can't hear you. Hang on first. I'll leave and come back. <clears throat> Okay, I'm back. Uh, hang on, uh, can you just make some sound or chung yi? Any one of you? Just to double check my headset. Yes, yes. Okay, good. Chung yi, thank you. So it's working. Right. I think just now it wasn't working. Thank you. Uh. Uh, let's get started. Uh, okay, I need to set up again. Uh. This morning, the network seems to be a bit slow. So hopefully it won't be do, uh, uh, it won't be lagging. Uh. Okay, so welcome to this uh, new tutorial. So I think every time you see me uh, for the tutorial, you will see that uh, we'll be starting a new tutorial test. This is every two weeks. Uh. So let's see, okay, now. The uh, tutorial we are starting today will be on the just recently completed uh, lectures on the introduction to artificial neural networks. Um, the next part, which is the multi-layer, will be covered, I think, uh, uh, later on uh, in the subsequent tutorials. So for this tutorial, there are about uh, all right, um, 11 questions. Huh? So, so far um, in the other previous uh, tutorial, the other group huh, on, on this tutorial, we were able to finish it, most of it anyway. So before I start, uh, any requests for any of the questions, you want to me to spend some time looking at it. Otherwise I'll jump straight to it and then uh, go through, I think most, if not all of them. Huh? So the first question is about uh, drawing to understanding uh, uh, how does the biological neuron look like? So I think the uh, main thing is uh, if you have such a question to answer, so although it's not stated here, you should be able to uh, draw it and then the sh I, uh, label, label all the relevant and important parts of the figure. 
Then the next question two, we talk about uh, what is the uh, artificial, what is an artificial neural network? Now the answer to this question, of course, you can find from the, uh, I think we have spent some time looking at the various, uh, I, I wouldn't say definition, various uh, description, uh, more like a description uh, of what is an artificial neural network. As you can uh, remember, there are actually not one, huh? there are several uh, <clears throat> description of the artificial neural networks. And I think the actual uh, description itself actually is still evolving, it's still changing. I think if we look, we have, we have seen the early description, which actually talks about the, how it is similar to our uh, brain uh, or the biological brain or the biological neural network. But through, the, through time, you find that uh, the description itself has actually loosened, has actually changed to actually uh, basically talk about as a uh, computing, I think the word they use was paradigm, uh, a computing method, which is uh, similar, which no, no, I think not similar, which has certain similarities, which has certain similarities to the biological neural network. So you can see it shifted from uh, uh, similar, uh, um, the same as the uh, artificial version of the biological brain. That was the first, first, first few versions. Then it went on, it, it evolved into, uh, has uh, the artificial neural network shared certain similarities with the biological neural network. Now, number three, question three, we talk about uh, examples, examples of three types of artificial neural networks. What are the artificial networks you are aware of, right? So again, if you look at question two previously and the question three here, right? So you can see that there are uh, certain uh, relationship. So basically, if you have such a question, what is an artificial neural network? Although it's not stated, although it is not, you are not told to, uh, what do you call it, to, to, to give examples of such new networks, it is good that you can, uh, you, you should be able, you should uh, give examples uh, and, and show which are the uh, new networks, types of new networks. Okay. So, okay. So I think, remember, remember what are the types of new networks, artificial new network models? Uh? I think a few names I can think of is what? Uh, your perceptron is the simplest one. <clears throat> then after that, you have your multi-layered uh, perceptron network. Uh, then you have your uh, new cognitron, uh, Professor uh, Ushima. And then also there's, uh, what, what else you have? Uh, the Hopfield net, which is a recurrent network, uh, which you will study. Uh, tomorrow, uh, when we start a brand new topic, the lecture notes have been uploaded to the Google Classroom, so you should be able to look for it as a refer to it. Uh. Uh, of course, for you to also make notes uh, as, as you follow the lectures. Uh, what else? Uh, new Cognitron, Hopfield Nets, and then also the Art Networks, Adaptive Resonance Theory, or the Art Networks, right? So these are some of the, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, maybe I'll, do some show show something otherwise you all will maybe lost uh, not so good huh? so my network is actually my digital bot is actually uh acting up so you have your mlp uh not so good not very sensitive your mlp <clears throat> your new connectron Uh, then you have your what half few nets, right? So these are some of the examples of your types of uh and it's your neural connectron and your art networks, the art series, adaptive resonance theory network, right? Um the then there's one more by this uh what's the name? I can't remember the name of it. Uh, there was on the basically it's uh 
it's been, I think uh, it's a big step. But uh, then never mind. Uh, again, we will look for it. Uh, uh, so there's a few, of course, there are others, uh, etc. So these are some of the names, uh, or some of the common uh, types of artificial neural networks. Of course, nowadays you have your, uh, before I forget, uh, there's also, of course, your CNN. Now, CNN, if you may, some of you may be surprised, actually, it started way back uh, in the six, uh, maybe 80s, 90s, uh, back to those days. But only with the uh, availab availability of uh, cheap and powerful computing, uh, cheap or powerful computing. That's why you have these uh, deep uh, networks. Uh, then, okay, now I remember the name. Uh. So the other one I'm looking for is actually SOMA. So uh, self-organizing maps, All right? Kohonen, uh, that's the word. Professor Kohonen, who has retired by now. All right? So this is by, proposed by Professor Kohonen. I think uh, we hardly hear about that. Maybe because he has retired. Uh, um, there's a, he's not supervising any more students to do any work. So that's why you don't hear of this anymore. You need to push this uh, uh, to, to actually uh, to keep it alive, uh, so to speak. Now, question four, we look at the um, the names. Uh, these are the biological uh, terms of the biological neuron. Now, what are the artificial equivalent of these uh, biological uh, parts of a neuron? Right, soma, dendrite, axon, synapse. Any one of you? Uh, Hang Xiang, for example. What is the artificial equivalent of a synapse? Hang Xiang, are you there? So I, I'm I'm doing this uh, randomly. I'll pick one of you. So to make sure you are here. Let me see. I think Hang Xiang will probably have. I uh, need to look look for the chat box again. I think probably he has a uh, key in something. Let me check. Uh. So sorry about this. I take a while to. My system is very slow this morning because I'm running something in the background. I'm running some simulations in the background. Yes, Hang Xiang, what, yes, it's not the answer. What is the artificial equivalent of a synapse? So you can see here all the names there are your uh, biological terms of a biological uh, neuron. So what is the um, artificial equivalent of, say, synapse? Easy for you, right? So easy. Function, since you are there, what is the artificial equivalent of a synapse? So A, you can be busy finding your keyboard to key in the name, or you can B, you can actually looking up your lecture notes, or C, you're still thinking. Mr. Ng, we are waiting. What's the answer? <laughs> Looks like Kang Xiang is stuck. Either he said his handphone is not working or line not working. Line is uh, cannot uh, reply. Any one of you help him so that I can proceed to the next question. Correct, Chung Yi, good. <clears throat> Right, uh, Hang Xiang, that's the answer. So with, those are the weights. Uh. So the synapses are the weights. Uh. So basically it represents the weights. Um, synapses are your, uh, they actually control the, the, the in interconnection in our brain uh, so that uh, we can remember things, we can do things. Uh, we, we know how to lift the arms or things like that. Uh. Okay, thank you both of you. So please pay attention. I will randomly call you again, some of you. <coughs> so your friend is actually, if, if you are, <coughs> so just remind your friend. Now, question five. Question five, we have actually looked at the various types of, because the later on you see, uh, you find that the, although the perceptron is very simple in terms of the, uh, the single neuron, uh, it's very, uh, artificial neuron is very simple. It has uh, another function, right? The first part is to summarize, uh, to sum up, do a summation of all the weighted inputs 
right? I would highlight the word weighted inputs. Huh? It's not just the inputs themselves, but the weighted inputs. And then the after you sum up everything, then you have to pass through a transfer function or the activation function. So here I just want you to name just two types, <clears throat> right? So again, I will invite some of you, especially those of you who may be uh, uh, electronically or virtually here in the mid in, in the class, but actually physically you're not around the what I call around the uh, at the screen. <clears throat> so I, anyway, I I keep it simple. I don't even need you to uh, to write anything. <coughs> Excuse me. I just want you to at least answer. So you can, you, you can be having breakfast or whatever. So it's okay. Just just open up your mic and say what's the answer, Miss Yeah. Who can I? Yi Hang, Kwa Yi Hang. So just name me one, or you want you can try both. What name me two types of uh, common transfer functions or activation functions that you are that you are aware of. Let's see uh, in case you you yeah your mic is not working. <clears throat> this question transfer function. No need to draw. Just tell me two types. I'll draw for you. <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, I I need to turn on my chat box again to see your reply. Yep, step function, you want to do one only, yeah? step function, okay, step function. <clears throat> There's a step function, uh, depending on how you uh, define it. So you can draw it somewhere here, <clears throat> right? So step function can be like this, All right? So your step function, this is your output, call it Y, and this is your input, call it X, right? <clears throat> Yep, sign function. Sign function is actually similar to your step function. Uh, Yihang, thank you. So basically, it's your somewhere down here, right? So this is a minus one, that is a plus one. Excuse me further. <coughs> Let me try a drink. So your, that is your, thank you. So we have both, <coughs> both the function. Other than that, <coughs> I think uh, we have talked about this in the, I think later on we talk about this. Another one is your what? Your sigmoid function can be something like this, right? Or, or can be also something like this. If you don't want to go into negative region, it can be all positive, right? So basically, once is, what it means is that um, anything exceeding one, you want to clamp it to just one. So any values here, huh? input values are very large. So you want to clamp it at, at, at this, this region here, <clears throat> right? And I can just erase this so that I clear the space. <clears throat> Okay, question six now. Uh, <clears throat> so the first part here, we look at the first part. Uh, you are, you are asked to illustrate, show, show the, with appropriate diagram, the correct separation for the following Boolean functions, the N and the all. Now this part here, i uh, just to guide you, <clears throat> right? So, um, <clears throat> so logically, if you are asked to draw the uh, separation, uh, correct separation for the Boolean function. So first of all, you need to consider, am I considering three, two, or N inputs? Four or five, whatever whatever it is, uh, four or five inputs. So I think I asked a question before. Uh, <clears throat> of course, it would be simpler to just do the smaller set, which is just two input uh, logic gates. Now, if I do more than three, for example, I will, have, I will have difficulty because if I do more than three, how do I draw <laughs> a four-dimensional space on a two-dimensional space, which is a piece of paper? All right. So therefore, <laughs> uh, so this this uh, the one inside the box here is to help you. But of course, uh, in the exam, 
if this uh, kind of question comes out, right, these things will not be shown because you are expected to be able to be to be analytical to to understand how do you actually show your understanding of the question of the theory, right, of, of the uh, of the topic in this case. So this one will not be given. So then question is, if this is a question here, how do you answer this? First of all, you need to show the truth table. So for example, let's look at the end gate. So we have your x1, input x1, and then your x, x2 is your input. Then your q is your output, let's say. Right? You have your, first of all, 0, 0. Now remember, 0 uh, <coughs> is your low, so output is a low. So basically, for all the combination of my uh, inputs, two inputs, uh, so the end function basically says that uh, unless and until both the inputs are one, all the outputs will be zero. <clears throat> okay, so you have this. Now, once you've done that, what happens? So here I need to maybe uh, Okay, I just draw my diagram. So I have a basically like this. So this is my uh, say x1, right, and my x2. So what else? Um, so if it's a zero 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 will be here, All right? So zero zero it will be zero. So let's let's let us represent the output zero by a, a sort of brown brown circle here. 0, 1. So x1 is 0, x2 is 1. So this, this place here, let's say for example, so it's an, also another 0. The last one is, the third one is 1, 0. 1, 0 over here. Okay, so you can see, you can see that. Huh? <clears throat> so now the next one is what? Next one is um, the last one, 1, 1. The 1, 1, let us represent it by a square box not shaded. So you can see now, my diagram consists of two types of uh, objects. Uh, circles, brown circles and a box. So how do I separate linearly between the two of them? So basically you just do this, huh? try, try to draw a line to separate the two of them. So what it means, what this uh, basically shows is that you find that uh, anything on this side, right, represents the the circles. Anything above here will be your your uh, square boxes, your ones. So any any point here, for example, so you can see the two things are set well separated. So any any time you want to test your network here, right, if uh, when the network is trained to rec to actually uh, train to produce such a separation line. I can, you can see that uh, anytime you test it again, any point here, this one, this one, or this one, right? It will give you the right answer. Or even if you have something in between, for example. Right? So for the all gate, I'll leave it to you because I, I'm looking at the clock here. I think we're about half an hour left. So I need to I need the time to look at it. Huh? <clears throat> now, okay. I think all of you pay attention. Huh? I'm going to ask the next person. Huh? So the ident no, question number seven. Identify three major differences of your artificial neural network when compared with the biological neural nets. So what is how how would you answer such a question? Uh, I've called Yi Hang already. Uh, let's see who is it? Uh, Jun Xing. Li uh, Junxing, how, how would you answer this question? Identify three major differences of your artificial neural network when compared with the biological neural net. Just in case I need to open my chat box, just in case uh, Junxing wants to answer it. <clears throat> Junxing, are you there? Uh, Mr. Lee Jun Singh.
Oksak, uh, Bijun Singh uh, strategies keep quiet. Lay low. Okay, Mr. Lee Jun Singh. So, means that you're not here. Can I say that you're not here? Okay, maybe if you don't answer, I'll leave, I'll open the question to the rest of the class. Anyone can help him? How would you answer this? Uh, uh, you can refer to your notes or you can just try to refer to what you have uh, heard during the lectures. So my, my, my advice is, first of all, look at it and look at the question and see if I want to compare two things, uh, I want to compare Jumin and Jun Sing. How would I compare? So first of all, I need to know what am I comparing? So what are the three things I want to compare? Anyone want to try? Uh, Hong Seng, is it? Jin Shen, is it? Uh, abstract. What do you mean abstract? I want to compare the artificial with the, the real uh, neural network or biological neural network. How do I compare? So again, uh, like I said, I give an example. If I want to compare apple with uh, orange, how do I, where do I start? Yeah, correct, Kasing. I think uh, you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah? So uh, you have to look at the things you want to measure. Because we see here, uh, uh, you see here, uh, if I want to compare two things, apples and oranges, so I need to be able to identify what am I comparing. I want to compare my example of apples and oranges. I want to compare what? I want to compare how sweet it is, right? How uh, A is sweet, B is maybe in terms of the vitamin C content, right? And then maybe uh, the uh, hardness, correct? Huh? So we look at the uh, things like, let me go back. Huh? I think I've got answers, answers, answers here already. So you have a uh, few of you have actually helped to help me to at least conduct this uh, tutorial. Thank you for your help. Uh, wait, uh, my, my, my digital board is hanging again, uh, slow. Okay, I'll write down. So you have uh, things like uh, A. Oh, hang on. A will be uh, speed, right? Uh, what, what else do we have? Uh, network structure. I mean, the structure will be maybe, uh, uh, yes, correct. Computational uh, network uh, reproduction. Uh, I think I'm looking at maybe a uh, size in terms of how big is it, a uh, network structure. And then C will be what? What is missing in terms of speed, in terms of size, in terms of uh, capacity, right? So then if you, once you identify what you want to measure, right, then you can say uh, this is your ANN and this is your uh, biological neural network. So then you say this is slower compared to your biological neural network. This is faster. No, sorry. This is slower, right? This is faster. Let me just erase this. This is faster, right? You have your faster processors. The size, of size is of course small, right? You cannot do a large network. This one can be bigger, larger, because you have, I think, remember we talked about 10 to the power of uh, say 11. Huh? Then uh, how about connections? I see uh, not, not doing, my, not very sensitive this morning, my, my bot. I think the connection is no good. Okay. So we can have, this is on our connections, which is larger. The connections in terms of connections, uh, we talked about this before. So if you have 10 to the power 11 uh, neurons, this one can be in terms of 10 to the power of 15 connections. All right. So this one, the artificial ones, only about uh, maybe 10 to the power, maybe, maybe um, I think I won't put a number here. Let's just, just say it's small. Right. Nowhere near here. All right. So the the trick is if you if you can see the answer, what I'm trying to tell you is that if you want to compare certain things, first of all, you must take a step back and reflect. How do I compare two things? I must have. I must be able to identify what I what I'm I'm going to measure. Again, going back to our apples and oranges, maybe another one could be in terms of the price, right? 
uh, I'm quite sure you've done it in your, uh, no, I think in your capstone, right? Project as also in your FIP, right? In your chapter two, you have to do literature review. You're comparing different methods to solve the problem in your project given to you. So if you want to solve a uh, problem in the pro in your FIP, you look at other people's uh, solution, right? Then of course you might be able to compare this method A, method B, which is better. Therefore, met I would as, as a result, after doing that uh, good analysis, then you find that I will do a select method B because from the results that I've, uh, analysis, I find that method B is better based on your analysis. So please, uh, um, any questions, comments? Okay. So neural networks, uh, um, basically, I think this is, I think we reference to artificial neural networks. They are able to adapt to new inputs, means they are able to change, right? To, un to actually, um, uh, change and but as well as to generalize. Yeah. Uh, so describe what this means. What do you mean by generalizing? What do you mean by adapting? And then again, highlighting the major differences with examples. If this helps you to your in your explanation, that means that you need to go give examples if you want to. Uh, if you feel that uh, I'm not very good at explaining in words, but I can explain by giving examples. So what would be the what you understand by generalizing, right? So if uh, A, you can go back to your lecture notes. Uh, B, you can uh, 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 recall, try to recall what was covered during the lecture. And we talk about uh, generalizing, we talk about adapting in terms of the, uh, with reference to your artificial neural networks. <clears throat> So let's see uh, what is uh, what is adapting, what uh, what is uh, adapt adaptation, right? Now let's start with maybe generalizing first. It's easier. So if you look, if you go back to your lecture notes, you find that we talk about generalizing in the uh, artificial neural networks, meaning that once you have your network trained, right? If I give it, if I show it a new pattern which is uh, not seen before in the training not seen before in the training, right, to be fair. And that new pattern is actually quite similar to what you have learned, what was shown in the training phase. Quite similar, right? not so uh, drastically different, not too different from the training set of patterns. Your network will then be able to recognize your new, this new pattern correctly, right? So you train your network, with a certain patterns, and then when you show it, when you test it with a new pattern, which is not too different, right? Of course, I, you can see that uh, if the pattern is very different, right? It will, you then you find your your network will not be able to give you your answer correct answer. So now, how can I explain this further? By uh, so I by maybe I can do it by giving examples. So for example, uh, I train my network to recognize only apples and oranges, right? So uh, especially in the in the current uh, current time, whereby many of you many of you will use the uh, CNN, the convolution neural network. Now, for the convolution neural network, you don't need to extract features. You don't need to extract things like the color of the fruit, the uh, the size of the fruit, things like that, which are which which we, which are known as characteristics. You do not need to do that. So you just throw in pictures of uh, apples, you throw in pictures of oranges. Of course, you need to throw in a lot and lots of uh, such images to train your network, right? Maybe different angle of your picture of your apple, right? The thing is rotated and then the, the, the apple, of course, is not uniform. The color is not uniform. Uh, green apples is still an apple, right? So the, your network must recognize that green apples are also acceptable as apples. So now after you finish training, right? You're happy with the results of training, then you show it a new apple. 
Now, once you show the apple now, maybe I show, uh, I think nowadays if you, if you have been shopping, uh, you know that I think in uh, I think China, they started producing these uh, yellow apples, apples, yellow in color. There's two apples, right? Uh, so maybe maybe not, not yellow. Uh, I think maybe a, a green and a red apple, or not green, uh, yellowish and red apple, right? So you show it to the, to the network, train network, then the network will still tell you this is an apple. Now, however, if you were to show it a yellow apple, which has never seen before, totally yellow, not even a spot of red, right? So that one could be, is a bit different now, different from what your the network has been trained. Or B, you showed an, a strawberry. Strawberry, if you look at it closely, is it is still in the shape of an apple, right? But of course, it's much smaller, and of course, the surface itself is different. There will be a uh, no, uh, little black dots on the surface of your strawberry. So that is an example of, uh, so the network will not be able to tell you this is a uh, uh, strawberry because it's very different, not, not, not seen before, not learned. So that is, so there will be, this one will be, then you're, in, in this case, you have to retrain now. You have to retrain your network to adapt to this new set of inputs, which is part of adaptation. So in this case, you need to adapt, you need to do adaptation because you need to retrain the network to learn. So the network has to relearn everything to adapt to the new conditions of recognizing strawberries. So in a way, this is an example of adaptation. So basically the key word is that generalization, able, uh, able to recognize the new data without training. In the case of adaptation, you have for it to actually uh, able to recognize the data correctly, you have to do retraining because the data is now very different from what it has been uh, used to before. Okay, so that is uh, basically the explanation about generalizing, generalization and adaptation. Any questions before I move on to the next question? All right. So now question number nine, I think uh, not much time left. So I think maybe I'll skip this one. Well, because uh, number nine, I will, we will still cover this in your question 11. All right, so this one uh, test your understanding of the uh, perceptron. It's just a simple two input perceptron. How, uh, what are the major components? What are the major parts of your perceptron? And then you clearly label all the key components. Now, question number 10, I want to go, go to this. Uh, so again, I will ask your, I will maybe invite some of you uh, to look at it, right? Uh, what, what do you see here? What's the, what, what, what type of uh, equation is this? Is this a linear equation, right? Or is this a non-linear equation? Okay, let's see now. Who can I invite? Uh, Wing Liang, are you here? Simple question. Hey, uh, yes, sir. This, I think, is yeah. linear equation. Correct. Linear. Thank you. So, when you pick, when you look at it and say linear equation, what what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Especially when, when we're talking about when when we're talking whole morning about uh, artificial neural networks. What's the first thing that comes about? So here you can see that because we know that the single perceptron, right? Single perceptron is able to separate, right? So able to uh, model linear uh, functions, huh? linear functions, which is your n function and your all function. So therefore, in this case, can I, uh, can I, what do you call it? Can I um, model this using a simple neural network? So this is uh, linear. So let me, let me just erase this. I need the space. <clears throat> Okay, now, how would you go about doing this, right? So maybe I'll start with this. Let's say I drew a little, my perceptron over here, my neuron here. Oops, I don't like this. Uh, okay, this is good enough. Uh, line color, give it a still one a red, and then I don't want this to be dotted, okay. Okay, so this is my uh, perceptron. 
So now, what else? So now you can see here my equation is y equals to minus 0.3x plus 0.7. So if I say this is my output y, right? So um, I can do it one way. I can do it one way by saying that this is my uh, x input. It goes in here. And then I have this little uh, weight over here. And this is represented by minus 0 0.3, right? And then my other input is my, another one here. This is, uh, right? So I put another box here. This is my weight. Now, what do you think this is? How should I label this? Anyone want to try to get your brain cells working? To get your brain cells working, anyone? Xinxian, for example, maybe you can try. So what, what value should I put here? All right, can see this is a constant. So one way is I can fix this to be 1.0, always 1.0, fix it to a one, tie to a one, and then this one will be 0 0.7. So again, can see I can have, I've actually, with this I can, I model my uh, perceptron to actually uh, model this particular linear function. Now what else, of course, of course, uh, if, you, if you remember, the uh, neuron here has two parts. One is the summation, which is what we have done here. This is the uh, activation function. But right? in this case, we just use a very special activation function, just times one. So you have your summation, minus 0 0.3, the weight multiplied by x, plus uh, the weight is 0.7, right? Multiplied by 1.0. The whole thing you pass it to the activation function, which is times one, and this is your equals to y. Do you follow? Right? Now, what else can I? What? 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 Is there another way of doing this? If you remember, of course, uh, this is not the end yet uh, in the sense that they, you can also have your own uh, method if you want. Maybe you can think of something else, right? But for, for us this morning, we just think of this. Huh? So this is your y again. Now what else? I can also do this. Remember, we have this uh, bias. So we have your x again, and then your one input. Now this time, I only do one input. This is of course minus 0.3. I set the weight to 0.3. And then here, my theta, I set it to be say uh, 0.7, right? And this is again, the theta is a weight here. Um, this time I put it 1.0, right? So in the earlier case, uh, we assume that the earlier case, uh, my, uh, my theta equals to zero. Therefore, I did not consider this. So this one actually will test your understanding uh, of the, uh, the architecture. Right. How does the perceptron uh, work? How does it look like? Okay, so we have about 12 minutes left. So now I go to the last uh, question 11. Are there any comments or questions uh, need me to clarify further from the question so far? Don't be shy. I think like they say that if you're shy, you lose out, especially when you're learning. Huh? Okay. So no questions, I'll continue. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so we have here, now in this question here, the last question, you are asked to calculate the outputs for the falling neural net as shown down here. Right? Uh, when it's used to each of the following activation functions. You have two activation functions here that you can you need to apply, the sine function and your sigmoid function. So, so furthermore, you are, you are told that you can assume your threshold, your bias is equal to zero. So you can ignore the bias over here, right? Ignore that for the uh, network here. I think what is not stated here is that each of these neuron, each of these circles here are your, basically your, uh, perceptron, simple perceptron, your artificial neuron, right? So this is uh, these are your uh, artificial neuron.
right? So what else? Are, so here is this what we have out now. What else can I say? Okay, this is a uh, now no longer a single uh, perceptron network. And unlike the earlier case uh, question, I think uh, uh, six for example. Uh, so here we have this, right? So uh, okay, maybe I'll, I'll just make the same diagram here. Okay, now first of all, you are told that uh, inputs is one minus one and one. So x one is uh, plus one, minus one, and a plus one again. So these are the three inputs, right? Uh, one, minus one, and one. Now, then, what do you? Do? What is the output for H one and H two, and then of course Q. Q we will calculate together, right? So let me try to uh, invite some of you to actually participate. Huh? Hing Dong, maybe uh, you try the first one here. Uh, who else? Leong Ho. Can you calculate this? Let us know. We work. Uh, calculate this. Huh? So, <laughs> yes. So zero point two. Zero point three. Yeah. Point three, yeah. Uh, uh, very fast. Zero point three for H two. H two. Ah, uh. wait, wait, wait. Let me get back here. There's a uh, Leong Ho. Uh, point zero point three. Is it? Okay, okay, so 0 0.3. Hing Dong, H1. These are neurons, uh, I want the final output. This is a hint already, uh, I want the final output of H1 that I can use to calculate the output for Q. Hing Dong, are you there? This one very fast, isn't it? I think Leng, if Leng Ho can do it so fast, I think so can you. Uh, minus point, what was it? Uh, minus point, let me check. Minus point one? Ha, ah, how do you get minus point one? Okay, never mind. We will, uh, Hing Dong says it's minus point one. And then he put a question mark there, not sure. <clears throat> okay. So now, what is the theory behind your perceptron? It is the sum of the inputs. Uh, first part, I think if you remember, we have, I think I've shown before, has two parts. This is your, let's say this is your Xn, X2, and X1, right? First part is summation. And the next part is your activation function before it goes to the output Q. So first part is very simple. You sum up everything. Right, so you have your uh, plus one times the minus three. So you have your minus zero point three multiplied by your one. Right, this one here, here, plus second one. This this line here. So you have your minus point two and your one minus one, minus point two, and your minus one, plus the last one is what? So this one it should be here, right? And then your plus one. So your minus point eight and your one. So what is this equal to? Hang on, back to you again. What's the answer here? Huh? Hang on, are you sure? Now he changed to point one. How do you get point one? Get your pen and paper, all right? So you have minus 0.3 times one, what do you get? Minus 0.3. Then your minus 0.2 multiplied by minus one, you get? The last one is what? Minus 0.8 multiplied by one, you get minus 0.8. Ding dong, what's the answer? Huh? 
Ah, right. So you must have taken the wrong value somewhere along the way. You get your minus point nine. This is only minus point nine, right? Leung Ho, what do you think? Is Hang Dong correct? As I said before, I want the final output from this neuron H1. Rest of the class, what do you think? Now, is there something we have not used? Is there something we have not used in the question? What do you see there? We are given two uh, activation function. First of all, sine function and your uh, sigmoid function. Right, so uh, we need to try for them. Now, how, how does the signal, what, what, the, what is the, what does the sine function looks like? If we look at the first question here, the sine function says that the output y equals to one, if and only if the input x is more than equals to zero. Otherwise it's minus, uh, otherwise it's minus one. So if I were to draw this here, right? If this is my line here, I'll have something like this, right? This is my input, X, and this is my output, Y. Right? So if uh, as long as X is more than equals to zero, it is one. Oops, sorry. Okay, so you have your, So as long as it's uh, more than equals to zero, I got a one. So as you can see here, everything is, uh, is over here, right? Now, otherwise it is minus one. So it'll be somewhere down here. Now, but what does the rest of the class think? Leung Ho, what do you think? Maybe I'll ask someone else now, instead of uh, stressing out the uh, two of you. Huh? Who else? Uh? Leung Ho, ask. Okay, Meilin. Meilin uh, on this, uh, in, in this classroom, he's next to, sitting next to uh, Leung Ho. Meilin? What is the uh, output now of my H1 that is calculated by Long, uh, Hing Dong? Hing Dong believes it's minus 0.9, but I think he forgot to put in the activation function. So what's the answer? Melin, are you there? Uh, no, that's not the answer, Melin. <laughs> what is the answer? You're supposed to be here, just a double check uh, because you, you, you sign in. So I think in your case, you sign in, I think most of the time I notice um, most of you, uh, at least uh, when you sign in, at least you stay around. Huh? What is the answer uh, for H1? Right, I, can, I, I told you before, uh, Heng Dong forgot something. He forgot to apply the activation function. So it's, uh, what's the answer? Uh, you, are you, or, or, or you believe that Hing Dong is correct? That is the final answer. Milin, uh, since you say you are here. So, what is the answer, Upper Java Pan? Okay, minus point. How do you get my, minus point seven? Let's try. Huh? Never mind. Okay, it's good for me to understand. Where you are from, where, 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 what, what you know, what you don't know. Now, Hing Don says it's actually minus 0.9, which is actually correct, right? Um, you can see minus 0.3, minus 0.8, plus 0.2. It's actually minus 0.9. Now, minus 0.9, right? It's over here. It goes to minus 0.9. But we forgot this part. This part is over here. Now, if you have minus 0.9, where is it? Input is, this is input, huh? Minus 0.9 is somewhere here. Minus 0.9. If this is my input, minus 0.9, over here, what is my output? Million. Simple, isn't it? 
Melin. I oh, it's now o'clock already. <clears throat> quickly, quickly, quickly. I think you have a class update this, right? Melin, Katao. Okay, never mind. Uh, I think uh, we we'll run out of time. So you can see here, actually the answer is one. Sorry, this is minus one. So it's minus one. So what you have here is that your output will be minus one. Minus one. Yes. Ching Yi. All right. Huh? Now how about Leung Ho's case? Leung Ho's case is 0 0.3. Right? He says 0 0.3. So with 0 0.3, what do I get? Um, let me just erase this. Uh. This will be plus one. Correct? Right, so now what's the output here? Same thing. Minus one multiplied by 0.5, you get a 0.5. Now, plus one multiplied by minus 0.2, you get a minus 0 0.2. So you get your two of them. What you get? You get 0 0.3. 0 0.3, do the same thing. 0 0.3 is over here. Chungi, what's the output? Will be plus one, right? Ah, so this is your answer for this will be plus one. Okay, so I think uh, we ran out of time. So I think I'll leave you to you to try this uh, later today or whenever, whenever you're free. Now the second part will be instead of applying the sign function, you apply the sigma function. So in this case, for example, if the answer is uh, say uh, 0.3, so what you get will be, uh, you apply uh, the input here. So it will be, output will be this. Is how you trans transform your input to your output. Okay, uh, I think we'll run out of time. So I'll stop here. Uh, are there any questions before we, we, we you go off? Otherwise, if nothing, I'll, you, can, you can go for your next class and then I'll see you tomorrow morning for your uh, starting a new topic on your lectures. Nothing? Okay, bye-bye.